Hi folks, I'm gonna try and weave together two stories today. I'm not sure they'll quite work, but I hope you'll get the idea. In 1 John chapter three and verse 16, the other 316, he writes, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. It's remarkable to me how many opportunities I have in a week to invest in other people, to speak a little word of encouragement to a, a sales clerk or to someone bagging groceries or to help someone with their cart or or to call up someone or send them a little text thinking about you, praying for you. We have the opportunity of taking advantage of God's generosity, sharing his truth, sharing his comfort, his joy, his peace, all of these things that he has lavished on us the intention is not to keep them to ourselves. We ought to act like rich people because we are rich people. We have been so blessed and we can afford to be generous. I was sitting with a friend on his porch today talking. He's a beloved friend and brother in the Lord, Sam Bonner. We met first at the university when we had a book table there. And he shepherds a little gathering of believers here in town. And he was telling me that in his early days, he worked at a meatpacking plant and he was a shop steward. And there was a, a brother there who was having a difficult time of it. His wife was sick and he wasn't getting to work on time. There was a day when things were a little more slack, but they'd flown in a new man from Chicago. He was now the president and everything had to go by the rules. And if you missed a minute or two coming into work, it was serious. And he had missed several mornings because he was getting the kids ready for school and so on. And he ended up a little late when he was arriving. And so the boss was talking about firing him. And so brother Sam went to see him. And he said, now, you understand he's going through a hard time and he needs a little leeway here. And uh, the boss said, look, the rules are the rules. We go by the rules here. He said, now, when you started to drive a car, were you given a little book about the rules? Yeah. And you've always kept those rules, have you? When you see an empty road ahead of you and you see the speed limit, 55 maybe, and you think to yourself, well, I probably could go 60. Is that true? Well, yes, said the boss. Well, you know, I have a book. It is actually made up of 66 books. It has lots of rules. And I happen to know that I have not kept a lot of them and I need grace, and I think you need grace, and I think this man needs grace. Well, said the boss, because you spoke up for him, I'm gonna give him a chance. He needs to prove that he wants that job and he's willing to work hard. So he said, you go and tell him. And Sam said, well, you know, I can't do it for him. He has to make that decision. Oh, I understand that, said the boss. In fact, he said, you know what? He got up from the, his desk and he put on his white coat and he said, let's go. And down to the slaughterhouse they went. And everybody wondering, what's Sam Bonner doing with the boss? And they arrived at this man's spot. And the boss shared with him, this man spoke up for you. And on the basis of that, I'm giving you a chance. But you're going to have to prove that you're serious about working here. And Sam said with a smile, he worked so well that he became the supervisor on the floor. You know, the apostle Paul said, uh, nobody was willing to stand up for me at my preliminary defense. He was just too hot to handle. And so no one was willing to show up and put in a word uh, for, for Paul. Say, look, he's a, he's a good man. He's a, he's a law keeper. He, he, he submits to authority and and he helps people, and no, no one was there except the Lord. The Lord showed up. So, Christian, we have these opportunities, you see. And, and the way 
God has arranged it is that he's put it into our hands. God could speak directly from heaven. He could write a little Bible verse in the stars, but he's given it to us to do that. And he's given us signing privileges on his bank account. Now, there is something in uh, finance sometimes called the quality of initial. It's the size of a loan or the size of a check that an official can approve. In other words, on his recognizance, that loan or that check is valid. And depending on how big that is, it's a status symbol in the banking business. A dear friend of ours, a true Christian gentleman named Jim Gilmore, arrived with his family from Scotland when he was just a boy. Wasn't able to finish high school, went to work early on, became a mail boy for the city of Winnipeg. Began to study at night. Got his high school, took advanced courses in accounting. And by the end of his career with the city of Winnipeg, he was the city treasurer. The only one at that time, this is probably 30 years ago when I was there, but the only one who on his own recognizance could sign a check for a million dollars. That sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But dear Christian, what can you do? You can comfort people with the comfort that God has comforted you with in a Christian's moment of crisis where a million dollars would do no good, but the comfort of God would. You can help give people wisdom from above, the wisdom that comes from God, and he shared with you so that you can share it with others. Or the encouragement of the scriptures. There are all sorts of ways that God allows us to take advantage of his wealth. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And the quality of initial that we have, the ability to, as it were, pray down the blessing of God on another believer, to help them, give them guidance or encouragement or comfort. It's limitless. Think of all the people that you could make life brighter for with a text, with a phone call, with some homemade cookies, with a, a casserole, just a little visit, some fresh flowers, whatever it might be. A little word of encouragement, a little word of thanks, perhaps an old Sunday school teacher or an elder who many years ago wept over you and prayed for you and encouraged you. The quality of initial, not the ability to sign a check for a million dollars, but something way more than that. And Jim Gilmore did that. He was out visiting the people of God. He was an elder in the local church. I went visiting with him one time in these slums where all these rejected people were, war amputees and, and people with drinking problems in these little hovels. And he and I went room to room and in a soft Scottish brogue, he shared the love of God with these people. That's really, that's where true wealth comes. This is, this is this wonderful program that God has given us so that in sharing his riches, we enrich others, but we ourselves are enriched. One last little incident. One of the last times I remember seeing Brother Gilmore, they were opening a new mint. The government was opening a mint for making coins uh, there in the city of Winnipeg. And it was a huge affair. And there were thousands of people there. People had flown in from Ottawa and uh, the city government was all there. And there was, as I recall, <coughs> a deputy mayor, or I don't know what his title was, but he wasn't quite the mayor, but he was the one under the mayor. And he was sort of being the MC. And after the ribbon cutting and all the boring speeches by the various people there, it was announced that now the dignitaries were invited to go to a certain, I think, a hotel where, in the words of the, of the uh, MC, there was going to be liquid refreshment. And we all know what that means, right? And this is what he said. Now, we're all going over to this hotel for liquid refreshment. That is, except Jim Gilmore. 
Can you imagine? Thousands, it looked like thousands of people were there, all kinds of officials and dignitaries. And it was a backhanded compliment to the consistent, faithful, God-honoring life of a city official who could be trusted with signing a check for a million dollars because he lived his life under the eye of God and for the blessing of others. May God help us to take advantage of the quality of initial, of this, this signing privilege that God has given us to bring down the blessing of God on our children, on our wives, on our local fellowships, on the people around us. We can afford to spread it around because God has been so generous with us. Thank you.